Hey everyone, and welcome to the latest video in our History of Racing series. Today we're going to take a look at the otter side of Formula One racing. But before we do, if you enjoy this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to our channel. And don't forget to check out the other videos in this series, we'll put a link to them right up above here. Without further ado, please enjoy 10 things you didn't know about Formula One racing. Formula One has always had its share of weird cars and weird drivers. But here are C-Squared Racing's top 10 odd facts you might not have known about the most famous racing series in the world. Sometimes it's all in the name. In this case, that name is Hill. Three drivers have entered the sport with the surname Hill, and all three have become F1 World Champions. American driver Phil Hill became World Champion in 1961. British driver Graham Hill won the title twice in 1962 and 1968. Graham's son, Damon Hill, took the crown in 1996, also becoming the first world champion son of another world champion. We're used to F1 World Championship battles being tight battles between the title contenders, with drivers often sharing the podium more often than not, but this wasn't the case in 1997. Michael Schumacher and Jacques Villeneuve went back and forth during the 1997 season. But strangely, neither driver ever shared a podium with the other that year. The pair won 12 races between them, but in each of those 12 races, the non-winning driver finished outside the top three. They say the first one to the finish wins, but technically, the finish line extends to pit road too. That worked out well for Michael Schumacher in the 1998 British Grand Prix. Schumacher was given a penalty for passing another driver behind the safety car, but because the penalty came only two laps from the end of the race, Ferrari chose to serve their penalty at the end of the final lap. Schumacher passed the finish line while on pit road before stopping to serve the penalty. Following the race, and a dispute about how the penalty was handled and whether or not Ferrari actually served it, the stewards chose to rescind the penalty and Schumacher was declared the winner regardless. The Indianapolis 500 may be the greatest spectacle in racing, but it was also a points-paying round on the F1 schedule in the 1950s. The cars and the rules differed from most F1 events, and most of the drivers were IndyCar regulars. 1960 was the last year on the F1 calendar, but the famed Speedway would host F1 races again from 2000 through 2007, and the Indy 500 is still considered part of the Motorsport Triple Crown that also includes the Monaco Grand Prix and the Le Mans 24 Hours. It still attracts current and former F1 drivers, most recently, Fernando Alonso. The exhaust from an F1 car gets hot enough to melt aluminum. While the melting point of aluminum is 1,221 degrees Fahrenheit, the exhaust of an F1 car can reach over 1,800 degrees. Because of this, the exhaust must be made from an extremely expensive metal called Inconel. How expensive? For the price of one set of F1 car tailpipes, you could buy an average passenger car. Think those drivers are just enjoying a leisurely drive? They're actually under some amazing stresses. An F1 car pulls more G's in cornering than the space shuttle did during a launch. One G is defined as the force per unit mass due to gravity at the Earth's surface. Basically, it's one times your own weight. An F1 driver can experience up to 4 G's in cornering, and sometimes even more under heavy braking. In 2017, Lewis Hamilton completed a qualifying lap in which his peak G load was recorded at over 6 G's. The shuttle astronauts? Well, according to NASA astronaut and first Japanese commander of the International Space Station, Koichi Wakata, they only had to put up with a lousy 3 G's. F1 hasn't been easy for female drivers. A few have been chosen as test drivers, but only one has ever scored a point in an F1 race. Layla Lombardi competed in 12 F1 races during the 1975 and 1976 seasons. In the 1975 Spanish Grand Prix, Lombardi finished sixth, but officially she scored only half a point due to the race being shortened following a serious accident. No woman has raced in Formula One since Layla Lombardi. 
F1 racing was very different in the 1950s. Among other things, drivers were allowed to share cars. If one driver retired from the race, the team was allowed to pit their other car and do a driver swap, ensuring that their top driver would stay in the race. This resulted in a number of wins being shared between two drivers, including the 1957 British Grand Prix, which was split between Sterling Moss and Tony Brooks. This rule has since been changed and sharing cars is no longer allowed. Superstitions surrounding the number 13 are nothing unusual. Even NASA avoids the number after a string of failed missions. In Formula One, the number has been avoided for most of the past 100 years. In the 1920s, the Delage factory race team suffered two fatal accidents involving cars carrying the number 13, including this one by driver Paul Torchy during the San Sebastian Grand Prix in 1925. In this accident involving Italian Count Giulio Massetti during the Targa Florio in 1926. For the remainder of the 20th century, the number 13 was only assigned twice, in the 1963 Mexico Grand Prix to Moises Solana and in the 1976 British Grand Prix to Divina Galicia, who failed to qualify for the race. Finally, the number made its return to F1 racing in 2014 when Pastor Maldonado chose to carry it on his Lotus Renault entry. Should we mention that Maldonado didn't exactly help the number's reputation? Any accident in an F1 car is bound to be expensive, but in 2004, during the Monaco Grand Prix, the Jaguar racing team set a new standard. For that race, the team was promoting the film Ocean's 12 and thought it a clever idea to attach 150,000 pounds worth of diamonds to the noses of the cars of Mark Webber and Christian Klein. Unfortunately, on lap one of the race, Klein was involved in a wreck, and the diamond was never seen again. Well, we hope you learned something new about Formula One in this video. Please watch for more videos in this series in the future, and keep an eye out for more episodes in our other series as well. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you on the next lap.